When using Socrative as a voting feature, the first thing you need to do is create a teacher account. When creating a teacher account, I highly recommend that you change the room number from the given random set of numbers and letters to your last name. This room number will stay with you as long as you use Socrative, unless you change it. Um, so I recommend using your last name. As you see here, I used Hero, which is my last name. Now to do the voting feature, I'm going to choose Quick Question and then choose short answer. At this point, I can type in the question so students can see it on their device. I'm just gonna type in clever argument in this case. Now, the number of responses per student, I only want them to be able to answer once, so I'm gonna say single, but I am gonna require that they type in their names. And the reason for this is I wanna see who did what but I don't ever have to show that to students. They're not going to see this even when they're voting. And then I'm going to press start. Now, what students will need to do is they will need to go to b.socrative.com and in the student section they're going to type in the room number, which in this case is hero, and then just say join room. The next step is students will need to enter their name. I'm just going to put student1 for the name and say done. They now have the opportunity to write out their argument, including their claims, evidence, and reasoning. I'd have students work in pairs, so where I put in student one, I'd have them put both of their names. But then they can type in their argument and press submit answer. As a teacher, I can see all the responses as they are coming in on my dashboard. And at this point, I don't have the name showing I could click on show names and see which students have answered each of these questions. You could have it showing names right now, but I wouldn't project that to the students. So at this point, I'm not projecting to the students. I can see the names and what's coming in. I can also hide the names. But if something comes in that's inappropriate, for example, I am a rock star is not an example of the argument, so I can click remove. Now, when all the students have responded and I'm ready to send out all of the sample arguments that the pairs wrote, I'm going to choose Start Vote. When I choose Start Vote, what the students end up seeing are all of the different responses that the class pairs have entered, minus the ones that I removed. Notice they don't see student names here. And so now students can vote. So they can choose which one is the best argument and submit their answer. Back on the teacher end, notice that as the votes come in, we see the different percentages and what's going on. So when everyone has voted, three out of three students have answered, we can see that 67% of the class chose A as the best argument and 33% chose B. Now, at this time, I'd have a whole class discussion about why A is the best argument. What examples of evidence did they use? How did they justify or use reasoning to explain their claim with their evidence? So this is a great chance to go over the best answer as well as other answers and why they didn't quite make it as the best. When I'm done with the vote, I'm going to click Finish up at the top. And here I can go back to the dashboard, the main page. I can also get reports and save it as an Excel file. I can email it to myself or download it. But I can always come back into Manage Quizzes later to access these reports if I want to see which students created which um, sample or which um, arguments. If I linked my Google Drive, I could also save this into my Google Drive as a Google Sheet. I'm just going to go back to the dashboard in this case, and now I'm ready to go for my next class period.